please welcome David Orton to the stage. Thank you very much uh, for that. You're welcome. And it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you here today, to be part of the battle for justice, for fair play, and for the rule of law. Why is this fight for recognition so important? Many of you will remember, all of you will remember the dark days of the illegal bombing of Yugoslavia, which started just nine years ago this month. I worked with Ambassador James Bissett, with Professor Michael Bliss, Professor Michael Mandel, and Mary Elena Repo, who sends her greetings to you here today from Saskatoon. She's sorry she can't be here. But others, Dr. Rosalie Bertel, Ursula Franklin, to set up the ad hoc committee to stop Canada's participation of the bombing of Yugoslavia. We held big public meetings all over Canada and spoke at demonstrations like this one that you've organized here today. And sometimes after the meetings, we would go down to the Zam restaurant, Bob Stupar's restaurant, and they would feed us food till we couldn't walk anymore. But, and I still have my cupboard full of bottles of Shlivowitz that the Yugoslavs from all over Canada uh, gave, gave me during that time. But at one of those meetings at the Zam restaurant, some young people asked me if I would phone Mr. Trudeau and ask him if he would speak out against the bombing of Yugoslavia. So I phoned Mr. Trudeau, who was still alive at that time, and I asked him if he would speak out. He said, well, I can't because if I do, someone will respond to me and I'll have to respond to that, and I don't have the energy uh, to do it. But he told me in our discussion, he said that in his view, it was the recognition by the Europeans, Germany first and then the United States and Canada, of breakaway Slovenia in 1991 that set in train the cycle of war and violence that lasted for 10 years. So that was Mr. Trudeau's view of the importance of recognition, and I share that view, and that's why I flew from Saskatoon and Saskatchewan to be here with you today. You, you and we were right when we opposed the bombing of Yugoslavia in 1999 and Canada's participation in it. That bombing was part of the forcible dismemberment of Yugoslavia, a sovereign state and one of the founding states of the United Nations. That, that bombing violated international law, it violated the UN Charter and even NATO's own charter and it laid down a precedent which is set in place the attack on Iraq, which has cost one million lives, and the invasion and occupation of Afghanistan that's going on today. NATO was supposed to be an alliance that stood against communist power. The communist power no longer exists. But in the past decade, NATO has not only occupied parts of Yugoslavia, but is waging a war in Afghanistan, into which Canada is becoming more deeply involved. And an article I just wrote on that is being circulated here by my brother and others. It's called The New Conquistadores. But this recognition of the so-called independent Kosovo, it's not going to be an independent Kosovo at all. They're calling it supervised independence. And the real power in Kosovo is going to be those 16,000 NATO troops at the military base Bonsfield, the largest base of its kind in Europe. This is not independence, this is an occupation. And recognition will simply compound the illegality and the immorality of the bombing and set a dangerous precedent that's going to affect all the world and is going to affect Canada. In Canada, we have here the Clarity Act, which set out clear rules for a referendum and negotiation with the federal government before secession by Quebec or any other part of this country can take place. The Federal Republic of Yugoslavia had very similar legislation and court rulings which were ignored and trampled by the foreign powers uh, that supported the secessionist movements. So we owe respect for the same framework of legality and dignity to the people of Yugoslavia as we expect for ourselves. Some of, some of you will remember in 1995 when the President of France the inter interviewed on Larry King Live in the United States said yes he would recognize a declaration of independence by Quebec and you remember the reaction and how we felt at that time. So
So what we're seeing is wrong, and I hope that all of you, this demonstration, I hope it will speak loud and strong, and there's other demonstrations that are being organized in other cities across the country that will urge and demand that our government not follow the United States and some of the Europeans into a recognition of Kosovo that Canadians may live to profoundly regret. Thank you very much. Once again, I would like to thank David Orchard, ladies and gentlemen. David, I think I speak for everyone here. You brought up some very, very powerful points, and thank you. Thank you for drawing those parallels. Next, we're